Never in a million years did I think that Adobe would actually figure out how to demosaic the X-Trans files from Fujifilm cameras. Brian here at Random Tech, and today we are going to talk about worms, not the kind in the ground, but the kind that you typically find when sharpening your Fujifilm photos in Lightroom. So without further ado, let's jump over into Lightroom and take a look at what I am talking about. I've got three images. Let's look at all three of these images individually and see if you can see anything uh, egregious in any of them. Okay, so this is the first one. This is taken from an X-T3 several years ago. I don't know, five, six years ago, something like that. This is from an X-106, and this is from an A7C2. In all three of these images, you probably didn't even realize it, but I have turned the sharpening up to 100% on all three of these images. In the past, if you had done that, even at the regular resolution of these images, you would have seen on these Fujifilm files these terrible, wormy artifact. When I zoom in here, let's just zoom in and you can see that there is still quite a bit of worminess in here. But the point I want to make is that what you're seeing here is no different than what you see with any of the files within Lightroom for any camera camera manufacturer. And I've checked them all. I checked Nikon, I checked Sony, obviously. I have some old Canon files I checked on it and none of them had the worms similar to what we were, what we um, used to used to see in this. So here's a picture of the X106. You could see the worms are basically non-existent. They're there, but it's very repeatable pattern. And lastly, this is the Sony A7C2. You could see it is the exact same pattern as the other two images. So normally, let me just go in here and show you how I would normally do this. Is I would go in here into my detail and sharpening again this is all the way up at 150 i would go in here and i would mask this so that i would only be sharpening the part of the image that i'd want to sharpen so let's say right about there so now when i go back into it you can see it is a greatly reduced impact when you're when you have masking on there even the dog is excited about this so what does this mean this means that if you were uh, reluctant to buy into Fujifilm as I have been because of this issue of not being able to sharpen your images in post in Lightroom or even just the demosaicing of the file itself in Lightroom like it used to be a nightmare it, it would when you would import a RAF file a Fujifilm RAW file into Lightroom and even just at its base settings, like not even adding any sharpening to the image, you would have this really mushy mess. So you had to add sharpening to it. And it looks like uh, Lightroom has finally figured out a way to demosaic these raw files so that they are consistent with every other raw file out there. And I, for one, am very excited. As a result, I've actually gone out and bought another Fujifilm camera. This is the X-T5. I've sold some cameras recently and I've gone out and purchased this X-T5. I got a great deal on this along with the 33 millimeter lens from my local camera store, which is Hunt's Photo and Video in Melrose. They are fantastic and I cannot recommend them enough. I also found a used 90 millimeter uh, here locally for uh, a great price as well as the 18 to 55 for again a great price at my local camera store so uh, i am investing quite a bit in fujifilm i have zero intention of using these fuji cameras both the x106 and the xt5 for anything other than still photography because when it comes to video Nobody beats Sony. In fact, that's what I'm filming on right now. This is the FX30. I still have a pair of A7C2s that I do use specifically for video, but for stills, I really miss those tactile controls for the shutter speed, the ISO, and the aperture on the lens. Although Sony lenses do have that, but missing the shutter speed, especially the shutter speed, I found it was really challenging uh, with the flip out screen, like to be able to read what the shutter speed is. And I was constantly like, missing it or missing the shot. So it was really 
uh, a challenge for me. So that is one of the reasons why I bought back into the Fujifilm system. But that is neither here nor there. The point I'm trying to make today is that it looks like from where I sit, Adobe has finally fixed the problem of the Fujifilm worms. Let me know down in the comments if you're seeing similar things within your Lightroom catalog. And if you are, let me know what you're seeing. And if not, let me know how happy you are as well. That's all I have for today. If you did enjoy content like this, I just kindly ask that you smash the like button and maybe subscribe to the channel and we will catch you in the next one. Take care.